I promise that I will be in Bahrain on the 24th of May, Friday. The location has been fixed. It's Hotel Rami Grand, opposite to Seif Mall. Those desirous of meeting me in Bahrain can contact my team at the WhatsApp number given below or drop a email at the email address given below. See you in Bahrain on the 24th of May. Hi everyone, welcome back to Bridge. Today I want to talk about the age-old debate which we all have. Should you be doing equity or should you be in debt, which is bond? What's your pick? Because you hear Anand talking about equity, then you hear Anand talking about bonds and uh, there's a lot of confusion. First, let's get something clear. Both equity and bonds are the, principally the same thing. We are offering up our poor money to the company. We're putting up cash to a company as an investor or a lender and in turn, we're off asking them to give us something in return. In the terms of equity, we are an investor. We are not a lender. We believe in the company. We believe in the business. And we want to be part of the journey. And we want to invest. And we are ready to wait for the long term. And we are willing to appreciate capital. We want capital appreciation. That is the main reason for equity. We don't look for the dividends. We actually focus on appreciation of capital. While a bond, person who is involved in bond trading, bond selling or bond buying, also lends money to the company as an investor. But here, the relationship is different. Here, he doesn't care about your plans. He doesn't care about what you do. He just wants to be paid like a lender, like a bank. He says, okay, you need money. I'm willing to give you the money. I agree to the terms which you're offering and I'll take your interest payments. Is it secured or unsecured? If it's not secured, you pay me more. If it's secured, fine and dandy, you can pay me a little less. But you pay me monthly, quarterly or yearly. Whichever way I want you to, that is the way the relationship between a bondholder and the same company is. So the same company can be in the market offering equity and it could also be offering bonds in terms of debt. And sometimes you can be buying it in debt and you can convert it to an equity. Instead of taking your capital back, you say, you know, you're doing very well. You take that flexibility and you take it back as shares. So that is the basic relationship. So what is it? Should you be in equity or in debt? Well, the answer depends on where you are and which time and space you are in the market. Because right now, the Indian benchmark equity index has reached record highs and is causing a lot of concern about overvaluation. There has been some corrections here and there, some days of major corrections, then some pullbacks, some profit booking has been going on. But overall, the market is very heated. And several factors in indicate to be cautious at this time because of the ongoing general elections, the geopolitical tel tensions, the high crude oil prices and the inflation which is there. And of course, most importantly, the world's largest economy, the Fed there is refusing to cut interest rates right now, delaying it, making the problems even worse macroeconomically, like what's happening in Japan and the yen. So due to these concerns, some investors are shifting their focus from equities to debt market. And that's one of the reasons why Anand's also been talking about bonds. And the recent bull phase we are running through is already quite old and it's over four years. Specifically, the Nifty 50 has surged almost 200 from its low point of March 2020 to a new high in April and driven by factors such as improved earning prospects, increased publicity, private capital expenditure and revived demand post-COVID has been one of the, all the main reasons why it's all been factored in for this growth. Market anticipates the stable political environment if the BJP led government comes back into power. So that's why they feel the election is not going to be of any major concern and shift in the market. So all this is only going to fuel further of maintaining this bull run, which we're already in for the last four years. Equity valuation concerns are not only felt by people like me and Anand, but even a lot of uh, fund managers sitting in many of these fund houses, like I say, say Prudential, they all feel that despite strong macroeconomic indicators, the current valuations of these markets are very high and trading over long-term averages is kind of very high. And the Nifty 50 price to earnings ratio is also much higher than the 15-year average, suggesting that the market equities are not cheap and are very expensive. So what does this mean? Despite the equity market looking so attractive for the long-term investment, experts are suggesting that we look at bonds and move to bonds for present short-term opportunities. This is also the same thing Anand has been saying, that if you're looking at short-term investment or you want some good short-term returns and you feel the market is overheated and you want something still be invested and have some returns, that you can look at bonds because 
in the short term, equity market is not going to go anywhere. So predictions of moderating inflation, the potential pivot in interest rates by end of this year are making bonds even more and more appealing. The debt market has already in India seen significant foreign inflows and set and this has added more to it because of JP Morgan including government uh, bond into the index, emerging market index, which has increased India's bond exposure on the index gradually. So what is our advice? Well, experts are saying this and Anand is also saying the same thing, which is recommending allocating more and more of your investments into bond, highlighting the appeal for long-term duration and medium duration bonds, at least for the next two years. So the strategy is if you have cash sitting around on the table over a lakh or so, to put them into bonds and take the returns from these bonds as interest payments and reinvest them into equities. So that way you spread yourself, and lower your risk and enhance your returns. So even if the market takes a beating, your capital is preserved because it's in bonds. And if the market continues now doing this bull run for another four years, you still have lots to gain because you've been taking your interest monthly and equating it, putting it into SIPs, buying shares directly in the stock market. So it's a hybrid method of investing, which is lowering your risk and also giving an opportunity, having a win-win, as they say. But remember this, diversifying your portfolio in this kind of a strategy involves multi-asset allocation of funds and balancing all of this. So make sure you have a good financial advisor who's advising you the right kind of information. This goes without saying. It's like having a good doctor, a good trainer. Don't make the work doubly hard for yourself, especially giving yourself sleepless nights when you don't know what you're doing. It's better to take advice from someone who's a little more uh, exposed and nuanced in this information, and they can explain this to you better based on how your risk assessment is. Aggressively taking equity exposure in current situations is not advised because of the way it is, the market being in a bull run. That too, dumping everything into bonds and avoiding equity altogether may not also be prudent considering the fact there might be some still steam left in this market. So all depends on your age, your current uh, risk tolerance, your commitments and your loan burdens existing to you. And then based on all this, based on all that, you can take an idea on how you should invest consulting your financial advisor. So I hope you found this video informative and entertaining, giving you a detailed explanation on how equity is, how bond is, how it works in India and where India stands. You must realize this, this changes from country to country. So if you're sitting in India, this advice is pertinent here. But if you're sitting in another market, let's say, for example, in Japan, or sitting in Hong Kong, or sitting in Europe, or you're sitting in US, you have to take the same kind of assessment into consideration. You have to see how priced historically is the equity market, how priced is the bond market, and you can make the same kind of a call over there. This is a very thing that was done throughout history, riding from one wave to the other because the bond and equity markets don't go in tandem. They go in alternating waves. So usually by keep staying in bond, then switching to equity and doing this repeatedly in a short span of time, you can really garner a huge, amass a huge amount of wealth if done correctly and prudently and done well. So I wish you the best of luck in this endeavor and do put in your comments down below if you would like me to talk about anything else related to this. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, Send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.